Yes. Uh, this gentleman, Mr. Jaki Hussain, age 51, right? What's good? Well, Ponchash. right. 50 years old gentleman, right? He actually basically hospitalized with the history of the road traffic accident. And we got a consultation uh, from the Department of Medicine. And we have seen, because of uh, the consultation, Dr. Hadguru Dakin. Hadguru Dakin. Right. He has got the, some of the hands and feet swelling. Did a power that can Right. It's power to that one. So hands and feet swelling and also the some of the facial puffiness. They stick to that one. Right. So that was the basically the consultation. Uh, the main concern, right? So immediately after Econ Arm Very good. So immediately after that we have looked into him and we have seen uh, some of the important hands and feet swelling. So whenever the patients comes up with us, the hands and fists were is very important. So we thought about some of the fluid accumulations, all right, into our body. So fluid accumulation that happens due to different organ systems dysfunction. So if we talk about the, the fluid, we pass the fluid from our body, very simple, there's a kidney is passing the urine, right, in the form of fluid and it's the balance of it. So if the kidney is dysfunction, so the first organ come for our the kidney dysfunction that leads to the fluid accumulation. Next to the kidney, the liver, just top of the kidney, I say sometimes, I right? say so liver is dysfunction, in that case the fluid accumulation, and top of the head in the department of the heart. So once again, the heart dysfunction, whatever the ways, organic and structural and functional abnormality, yes, it can cause the fluid accumulation. Means the heart causes congestive cardiac failure, we can say, the liver, liver failure, right, in the form of chronic liver disease patient, in the case of decompensated chronic liver disease. And also the kidney, the renal failure, or maybe some of the nephrotic syndrome. So these three, right, the kidney, liver, and also the heart. So always we try to evaluate this to evaluate and also exclude the three important organ systems, whether they have the dysfunction or damage to, to their, their accident, causing these of the hands and feet. Right? But mind you, what is suspected first at look, this is very important, he is looked to be a very powerful face and also hands and feet swelling, not really the fitting gidima, that's really important. You come up, you come up. It took it happen, all right. Not that fitting, all right. So that suspicious as yes, the non fitting gidima, we say that yes, the hypothyroidism is the next stop that we should think about. And also, another important thing, he has a good uh, history from his family members. They say that he has changes of his appearances means that his facial appearance is changed to a great extent. He has the puffiness and also some of the changes. So we put the diagnosis, the first diagnosis, the hypothyroidism, and second one is also the acromegaly. So our target is to exclude the acromegaly and include the, yes, the hypothyroidism as well. And also, if the acromegaly is the pituitary causing some of the hypo-functioning of the pituitary gland, and also some of the visual field tests we have done on the website, we have not nothing found. We have not actually found any of the findings of the pituitary gland uh, involvement and causing some of the pressure symptoms of the pituitary field involvement. So we tried ourselves to exclude the acromegaly first to do the test like the OGTT with the growth hormone measurement, and uh, we cannot do the IGF-1 test because this is unavailable uh, in our hospitals as well. So what we found basically, right? We have found right the uh, we sent the test like the TSH and FT3, FT4 all together and we found the TSH is more than 60. I would like to show some of the reports in hand so that will be fine. And I would like to present in different ways. Basically, I would like to show some of the biochemistry. So you could write some of the features here. So, Whenever we talk about the hypothyroidism, uh, yes, you see the reports of NTTPO is positive. That is the last test that you have found, right, the more than 2,000 is significantly very, very high. And the thyroid gland ultrasound that you have done, the diffuse enlargement of the both thyroid gland, just keep in your minds what the reports are finding. I'll discuss it a little bit later. Yes, this is the HBSAV negative, means the liver evaluation has been done. And here's got some of the IFG and IGT. You see the fasting glucose is six, and the two hours after blood sugar, that is the 7.8. And the basal growth hormone is 0 0.06, this is normal. And TSH comes up like the more than 60. So yes, this is very, very high. Uh, you can remember the 0 0.5 to 5 is the normal range. So FTP is reduced. So once again, the hypothyroidism, HB1C is typically normal. 
and increased CV is normal, and having the ultrasound liver has some of the mild fatty changes only. Protrumin time is normal. Here the CBC count is absolutely normal. And here the creatine is slightly raised, 1.41, but having the serum total protein and albumin is 3.6. So once again, the liver is actually, liver is not the main problem causing this. Yes, hands and fears. Yes, my dear doctor. So once again, what I'm saying, my dear, listen very carefully, one of the important talks that I'd like to say. What is that? That is the hypothyroidism, however we say, hypothyroidism is not a diagnosis, it's not a disease. It's just a manifestation of the sound underlying disorders. So however we talk with the hypothyroidism, so we need to evaluate the underlying etiologies what can cause this hypothyroidism. So once again the hypothyroid is just a thyroid function status, means the thyroid gland over functioning, that we call the hypothyroid. Thyroid gland normal function we call the U thyroid. Right? right middle finger take the right. Yes, thank you. So once again, uh, over functioning that we call the hypothyroidism. Normal function we call the euthyroid and hypofunctioning gland that we call the hypothyroid. So this is basically a status of a thyroid gland. All right, thyroid gland status. So whatever the disease is, so this is a separate term. So once again, whenever we have got the hypothyroid clinically, as well as the biochemical confirmation of the hypothyroid, so in that cases we try to look into the underlying etiology. The first underlying etiology is the primary atrophic hypothyroidism. And second is the yes, the Hashimoto's thyroiditis. I say sometimes if you've got the hypothyroidism, if you have the gland is yes enlarged, so the diagnosis yes at the best side, the most typical is the Hashimoto's thyroiditis, the most likely. If the gland is atrophic, it means you cannot pump with the gland at the best side. So yes, the diagnosis is the primary atrophic hypothyroidism. Itself, it says say that the atrophic means the gland is atrophic, all right? So you cannot palpate the gland. So in contrast, the gland is yes, the enlarged. So in that case, you can think about right the hyper hypothyroid with the gland enlargement. The, once again, the thyroid vagal, the diagnosis the Hashimoto's thyroid is likely present. So once again, I'd like to go back to the clinical manifestations of hypothyroid and hyperthyroid. I would like to talk about the three bundle packs is really important. So just let me start by the three bundle packs. This is really important to see and look into the patient's history so that you can evaluate the patients having the features and manifestations of the hyper, hypo, as well as the new thyroid. So yes, my dear doctor, what I'm saying, starts with the first question, whenever you evaluate the patients, there is a weight changes. So you need to ask about the weight changes. It does mean the weight changes is weight loss. And next in the, yes, once again, immediately after the question of weight changes with weight loss or weight gaining, there is the appetite. And after that, once again, you have to talk about that, once again, that the diarrhea means the bowel movements, so the diarrhea and posture. I said the WAD bundle packs is really important to ask them the GIT manifesting weight loss, appetite, diarrhea. In case of hyper and in case of hyper, once again, weight gaining, appetite is will be reduced as well as the diarrhea just turned to the constipation. So this is the bundle pack of the WAD. Next bundle pack, the H has speed. So H for heat intolerance, S for sweating and P for palpitation. In contrast to the cold intolerance and sweating in contrast to the Dry, all right, and sometimes a cool, all right, cool hands and dry hands. So once again, the palpitation is absent typically in case of hypothyroidism. So what I say, the WAD, HSP, and the last bundle pack, the third one is the dry bundle pack. Dry means the restless, anxiety, and insomnia. In contrast, restless, patient having the rest, means the patient will have the extreme fatigue ability, extreme fatigue and weakness. Anxiety, the patient will have the depression in hypothyroidism and insomnia, the hypersomnolence in case of hypothyroidism. So what I say, once again, the WD, HSP and dry bundle pack that you need to remember. And in case of female persons, then you need to ask the last one of the mag bundle pack in the menstrual cycle. Yes, in case of hypothyroidism, we are getting the, once again, manorrhea. In contrast to hypothyroidism, you can put the amenorrhea or dysmenorrhea. And sometimes we can get the manorrhea also. It's a menstrual problem in both cases. So yes, once again, what I'm saying, summary talk, the clinical 